Hello and welcome back to the Start Your VFX Career series here at Rebel Way. I'm Caleb sitting in for Urban. In this video, we are going to talk about the VFX industry in general and cover a few of the most important topics related to our industry. We'll talk about VFX salaries. How much money do you make as a VFX artist? We'll talk about the best cities to live. We'll talk about the best schools to go to and generally just talk about a few keys to success as you kickstart your career in the industry. I hope this video is helpful. Now let's get to it. Okay, so let's get started with this overview. So in this video, I'm going to do a lot of myth busting. And no, I'm not gonna have to blow up a card to do that, but there are a lot of false rumors that go around the VFX industry, especially as it relates to education. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a clear direction on what the industry is actually like. So let's kick things off by starting with the thing that you've really wanted to know, salaries. So the average VFX artist in the United States makes about $85,000 a year, which is a very livable wage, especially as an artist. And so it's really interesting whenever you look back and look at some of these industries that maybe your parents wish you would have gone into and what their average um, income is. So engineers, architects, software developers, lawyers, they make about the same as a VFX artist, if not a little bit less on average. And so a VFX artist career is very much one that is lucrative enough to justify uh, your investment in your education. Now, if we go one step further and really compare VFX artist salaries versus other kind of art driven industries, you can see that VFX artists in general kind of make more than most um, of those other artistic industries. One of the main reasons is VFX are incredibly difficult to create, and so you tend to be a specialist with a lot of specialized skills that aren't easy to replicate um, compared to, for example, a graphic designer. While there are certainly graphic designers that are capable of doing incredible things, it's also easy to find a lot of less good graphic designers that will charge much less for their services. For VFX, you either know VFX and you create awesome stuff or you don't and your stuff looks terrible. There's not really a pretending <laughs> that you can do in the VFX industry. So in terms of experience, just like any other industry, you make more depending on how experienced you are. So if you work anywhere from zero to two years in the VFX industry, you're gonna be making about 50 grand a year, two to four years, 67, and then five plus, you can expect to make over 100,000 a year. And you'll also notice that we have some of these prices broken down based on an hourly rate, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So the goal of most VFX artists is to work at one of these awesome studios creating content like uh, Star Wars, or uh, maybe you wanna work on like a Pixar style movie, or maybe a AAA game at a place like Blizzard. Well, you'll be happy to know that most of the big studios actually pay incredibly well. Now, depending on where you are in your career, you know, if you're newer, you might not make as much. If you're more experienced, you might make even more. But in general, this is what the average VFX artist makes at these studios. So very much a livable wage, even with most of these studios being in larger cities. So let's break down some of these salaries and hourly rates based on the typical progression through the industry. So most people start their careers as an intern or a runner. For both of those positions, you can expect to make around $15 an hour, a little bit less, a little bit more. And so once people are educated, so that means whether they've attended an in-person school or they've received their education from an online school and they're ready to get their first job, typically you can expect to land a junior artist position making about $25 an hour or $50,000 a year. Now, after that, once you kind of have some experience under your belt, you become a mid-level artist making about $32 an hour or $67,000 a year and then you move on to a senior artist role, which would be about $50 an hour or $104,000 a year. Now, some artists will end their career and just be senior artists and they love creating art and that's awesome. 
A lot of other artists want to move into a supervisor role where they actually oversee a team of artists. And if that's the case, you can expect to make around $75 an hour or 160,000 a year, but it all just depends on your location, what the projects you're working on are, and then obviously um, your experience and the studio you're working at. So a general rule of thumb is really the more technical your position, the more it pays. So if you are a technical director, you could expect to make more than if you're just kind of a general artist. And so, you know, the more technical knowledge, whether it's coding or um, learning how to get applications to talk to each other or just simply the technical knowledge that you have in creating and simulating effects, you can expect to make more money. So the VFX industry is actually really different from most industries that perhaps you would have gone to college to pursue. So a job in the VFX industry is typically a limited contract. That means that artists are hired for typically a project. So it may be a film, it may be a game. And then after that project is done, typically a studio will scale back their workforce, which means not that there's layoffs because you were never really on the full-time team to begin with. It's just you won't have that opportunity to remain kind of fully employed. And so because of that, a lot of studios will pay a higher hourly rate um, to their artist so that it makes sense for them to kind of have the that downtime between gigs when they're looking for the next project. So a lot of time artists will have uh, contact with other studios and they'll be working out their next gig and you know they'll be like I'm booked through April but I can start your project you know mid-May and things like that and so typically you can expect that to be part of your day-to-day -day routine until you have some more experience under your belt or you land at a studio where they just are wanting to hire you indefinitely which uh, is great and that can be a great option if you're looking for a little more consistency um, in your career. Now, income can be inconsistent as a result of these limited contracts. So it's important as an artist just to have a savings, a buffer that you can fall back on and to always just be kind of looking out for where that next gig is gonna come from. And then obviously um, a lot of these contract gigs will typically pay hourly which may sound weird, but that actually can be helpful if you're in the VFX industry, because when you're paid hourly, that means if you work overtime, you can expect to make more money. Whereas if you're a salaried employee, sometimes if you work more, you still get paid the same amount of time. So sometimes it can be more lucrative to be an hourly employee. And that brings us to an important term that you should know called permalancing. So the VFX industry is notoriously scared of commitment, so it can be sometimes challenging to find a traditional full-time job in the VFX industry. But a lot of times what happens is a VFX industry may bring you on for a limited contract and you'll be a contracted employee and you may even be required to pay your own taxes, but they'll bring you on for a short amount of time, let's say it's six months, but then towards the end of your six months, they may be like, oh, let's keep you on for another six months. And that may just continue again and again. So it may look like you're a full-time employee, but from a legal perspective, the studios just like to you know, keep the option open if they want to scale down, which obviously is a little scary. And so you should be making more money if you're doing these limited contracts anyway. So it should all just kind of work out in the end. So now let's talk about the work environment. So there are a lot of pros with working in the VFX industry. So like I said before, the pay is generally pretty good. Uh, the projects obviously can be fun. It's pretty awesome to say that you worked on Star Wars. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of name recognition. So not only for uh, the work that you do, but also you know, whenever you're explaining your jobs to friends and family members, they'll be like, oh, you worked on the Avengers? That's cool. I love the Avengers <laughs> and things like that. There's also potential for awards. So obviously the big one is the Academy Awards, but there's all sorts of lower level awards in our industry that um, can kind of point out if you are going above and beyond in your work. Obviously you get to work in entertainment and video games, which is just simply fun, you know, compared to doing things like taxes. And you'll always be learning new techniques. So if you're someone that likes learning new things, if you're someone that likes improving their skills and just staying up to date on the latest technology, it's a really good industry for your personality type. Now, obviously there are cons with working in the VFX industry and we want to be just fully transparent about what those things are. So 
Yes, you can expect to work long hours in the VFX industry. This is not exactly a nine to five style job. So if you are looking for something that's just clock in, clock out, go home, VFX industry may not be for you, especially towards the end of a deadline, whenever you know, you're know you trying to get a project out there, you might um, end up being at your studio for 12 plus hours a day. Um, I've even heard stories about people spending the night at their studios, so that's not great. And um, it all really just depends a lot on the work culture and how good your producers are as well. And so great producers will properly scope to where this doesn't happen to you, but inevitably you will work long hours being in the VFX industry. Um, this also means that, you know, you may have to work some nights and some weekends. Um, obviously you'll have those short-term contracts, which is not quite as stable as working for a, um, a long-term uh, full-time position at a studio. Um, it's not to say that all VFX jobs are short-term contracts. I think there are more and more VFX jobs that are popping up as full-time lately because VFX studios are just desperate for talent, but the contracts are still um, very pervasive in our industry. The industry is always changing. You know, it's very common for studios to chase tax credits and things like that. And so you may have to move a little bit. You know, you may be in Montreal for one project and then uh, move to Los Angeles for another project. So that's pretty common. So there's also stress around deadlines, of course. You know, when a project needs to get out, the studio environment, it kind of shifts. It can be more stressful and that's just part of it. And of course, there aren't union protections in the VFX industry yet. There's a lot of work going on to create more union protections. And so five to 10 years from now, there might be a more uh, larger VFX union that mirrors things like the uh, Screen Actors Guild and things like that. But um, as of right now, there's not a, a huge body of uh, governance on protecting workers in the VFX industry. Now let's talk about locations. So where should we live as VFX artists? So the United States is still by far the best country for VFX jobs. Obviously you have Hollywood and then um, New York, which is really big on um, visual effects and then also the advertising industry. Canada is another fantastic country for visual effects. You have Montreal and Vancouver, which are really big hubs for visual effects, and then Toronto's up there as well. India has been growing like crazy and creating a lot of studios, and so we can expect to see the industry out there grow a lot more. The UK, of course, London is a major hub for VFX. There's uh, some other studios in Manchester and Glasgow, and so it's a, a great place for visual effects artists as well. And then Australia, right? Um, there's plenty of great VFX studios in Australia, Weta being the most popular, and they continue to just grow their industry out there as well. So I wanna do a quick little uh, countdown. Let's make this a top five of the best cities for VFX artists. This is according to data that we have pulled off the internet and we can uh, assure you that this countdown list is accurate because we have lots of contacts in the industry and have worked in the industry for a while. So number five is Montreal. It's a fantastic city for artists and the uh, best place to get poutine, which is, you know, really a, a great uh, reason to move somewhere. French fries with gravy, like, come on, that's great. Number four is San Francisco. So obviously the headquarters of Industrial Light and Magic. There's also plenty of other VFX studios out there, as well as tech jobs that hire VFX artists. And so, you know, it's very common for um, artists in the VFX industry to get pulled into working for really big companies like, for example, Apple, um, to do things like their promo videos and stuff like that, which rivals some of the best studio work in the world. Next, we have London. So London is an incredible city for visual effects artists. There's lots of studios doing really fun work. And um, as long as you bring an umbrella, you should be good. Number two, we have Los Angeles. You may be surprised that this is not number one, uh, but Los Angeles still is a fantastic hub for visual effects artists. I believe there's more visual effects artists living in Los Angeles than any other city in the world. Uh, great sunshine, lots of outdoor activities, and obviously it's just in Hollywood. And so if your dream was to work 
on feature length films and to kind of be in the middle of just kind of the vibrancy of working with other artists, even if they aren't a visual effects artist, you know, actors and directors and cinematographers, Los Angeles is a great place to live. And I gotta say, I'm a little biased because I live here. And number one, you may be surprised to hear, is actually Vancouver. Let the cranes behind you kind of give you uh, some sort of indication as to what is going on in Vancouver. Vancouver is really growing a lot as a city right now, and tons of studios are actually relocating to Vancouver. So Industrial Light and Magic has a studio out there, and um, all of the major studios are beginning to have a presence in Vancouver. It's a beautiful city, lots of rain, but the Pacific Northwest is an incredible place. Uh, to call your home. So don't be surprised if you end up getting an offer from a studio in Vancouver. And so there's a few other honorable mentions that we should talk about. So Berlin is another VFX hub in Germany. They're doing great stuff. Toronto, of course, is a great location. And Tokyo is growing a lot, especially uh, for Houdini artists, which you may want to be as an artist uh, going through this course. So the question you probably have is, do I have to move to a big city to be successful in the VFX industry? And while I wish the answer could be, yes, you can live completely remote, you'll be totally fine, and some artists do work remotely and do find successful careers that way, the truth is, if you really want to make an impact in the industry, if you really want to do your career a service, you will more than likely be moving to one of those eight cities that I've already talked about. And that's just going to help you set yourself up for long-term success. All of those cities are fantastic places to live, and depending on your personality, you may choose one over the other. But our recommendation is to at least get ready to move to a big city. You can learn and grow your skills from being in a small town, but eventually you will more than likely have to transfer to a big city. So now let's talk about education. So this is a very controversial subject in our industry, but we are going to be fully transparent with you and try to help you figure out what is the best route for you in your career. So just like before, the big question is, do you have to go to a VFX college or school to have a career in VFX? The short answer to that is no. You do not have to have a degree to get a career in visual effects. However, you do need to be educated and it's really hard to be educated 100% on your own. And so don't expect to be able to just hop in Houdini or hop into Nuke and learn it just from scratch because you're just some sort of like prodigy at the software. The truth is you need some sort of guidance. And so that guidance can be from an online school or it can be from an in-person school. And it really just depends on your personality, your financial situation, and your family situation to help you determine really what would be the best choice for you as an artist. So at the end of the day, there's really three things that you need to have in order to be successful. So number one is proficiency, which simply means you know the tools, you have the experience, you can do the job. Number two is a portfolio. So you need to have experience in the industry. And then you also just need to prove through a demo reel and online portfolio that you're capable of creating visually stunning work. And number three is personality. So you don't have to be the most outgoing person in the world, but you do need to be friendly. It's important just to be a kind person because as you interact with people in these studios and inevitably people will go off to land other gigs around the industry, if you have a good personality and you're a decent artist, you'll inevitably get offered different positions around the industry. 60% of successful VFX artists have attended college for VFX or CG arts. And so the majority of people that have roles at VFX studios have more than likely been formally educated. Now that's not 100%, right? That's, a, that's pretty close to a 50-50 split, but that also should just kind of note kind of that if you can go to a VFX college, you should try to go, but it's not uh, something that you absolutely have to do. So let's talk about a few reasons why VFX school 
is helpful. So a good in-person VFX school, and good is the important word there because there's a lot of bad VFX schools out there, but a good VFX school will have relevant curriculums that are just up to date on the latest techniques. They will have experienced professors. A lot of times their professors may actually work in the industry and then teach part-time. That's a great type of school to look for. Um, they will give you access to hardware to where you can get in on a good workstation and practice your skills. Um, good schools will give you connections in the industry, right? So a lot of the professors, the faculty, and then even the students going through the program will help you just grow your network. And then these good schools will have high job placement rates. And so it's really common for good schools to have job placement rates in the 80 and 90 percent tile, which is really good. It's great to have a guaranteed job once you leave school. So our in-person school recommendations are as follows. We're gonna do a quick countdown. So number three is the Lost Boys School of Visual Effects in Montreal or Vancouver. They have two locations. Both of those cities are fantastic hubs for visual effects. And so it's an easy pipeline to go to school and then transition to your first full-time job. And $40,000, while that is expensive, that's a, a good chunk of change ultimately with the money that you will make in the industry, you know, thinking about if you end up being a supervisor making on average 160,000 a year, that, that $40,000 investment is absolutely worth it. Number two is the Think Tank Training Center in Vancouver. Very, very affordable price and it's a great school with a good track record. I definitely recommend checking it out. And number one, it may not be a surprise, is the Noman School in Los Angeles. Noman has a track record for producing some of the best visual effects artists in the world, and they do an incredible job with just creating a great environment for visual effects artists to learn and get trained by some of the best artists in the world. And just look at this library here. It looks like something from like a futuristic Darwin library. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen, but it's also, you're gonna pay for it. So you can expect to spend about $84,000 for a program at the Noman School that is before your scholarship. And um, on top of that, you do have living expenses. So that can be cost prohibitive for some people, but if you can make it happen, we would definitely recommend going to the school. So here's a pro tip. If you are looking to figure out what school to go to as an artist, we really, really recommend not going to public school. So most public schools will have some sort of like computer generated art or communication art degree but they will be really outdated. There are a couple notable exceptions. So the University of California and Texas A&M are good schools for visual effects artists, but they are really an exception. And so if you can go to one of those private art colleges, please go, um, you won't regret it. So school obviously can be expensive. So that's just something to think about. You know, Financially, you may not have $85,000 sitting around. If you do, great for you. But if you're like most people, that is probably not going to be available to you. And that transitions us into talking about online visual effects schools, which can tend to be much more affordable. So let's talk about the differences between online visual effects schools and in-person schools. So the big difference is in-person schools Obviously you get that in-person camaraderie and accountability, which is really important um, for some people to just stay self-motivated. Online schools, you don't have in-person camaraderie, but you do have uh, online camaraderie through like chat groups and live streams and things like that. Obviously in-person schools, they will have the hardware on site for you to use. Whereas online school, you'll need to like build your own computer or buy a computer and then work off of your own computer. In-person schools, are located, the good ones are located in cities where there are visual effects studios. 
that's really important for you as you progress in your career. Whereas online, unless you live near a studio or are willing to relocate to a studio, you may not live near um, a, a great city basically for visual effects artists. So it could be important for you, especially if you are learning online to go ahead and start thinking about moving over to one of those bigger cities. You know, Maybe you wanna move over to a big city while you learn so that you can transition into a full-time role once they open up. So online schools also have some perks as well. So obviously online schools, the schedule is way more flexible. So they tend to work around your schedule. So if you have a part-time or full-time job, a lot of times online schools will allow you to learn while an in-person school, typically it'd be very hard to have a full-time job and learn at one of those. They can tend to be a lot more affordable. You're gonna save tens of thousands of dollars if you decide to do an online school. And of course they are available anywhere and not just specific locations. This is especially important if you're concerned with things like visas and being away from your family and friends and all of that. So there are quite a few online schools out there. Here are the ones we recommend. Obviously we're a little biased because we are an online VFX school, but we have a proven track record for students going through our program and landing full-time jobs in the industry. And so we're very passionate about empowering artists to not only land their dream job, but also to grow their skills once they are practicing in the industry. So we have about a 50-50 split of people who are new to visual effects and trying to get in the industry. And then 50% of our people are in the industry already and then just trying to grow their skills. And then you also have FX PhD. They do fantastic work with um, some shorter form courses. Learn Squared is a great resource. CG Circuit, CGMA, these are all good schools for learning VFX techniques. So now I wanna talk about real quick the difference between the quality of work produced in an online school versus an in-person school. And what I'm gonna do is show you two demo reels here. So the first demo reel is going to be an excerpt of the demo reel created by the Nomen School. And the second one will be a demo reel of work created by the students at Rebel Way. And I'm not doing this to say like this school is better because this demo reel is better or anything like this. What I'm really just trying to show you is you can create high quality work whether you go to an in-person school or an online school. So let's uh, go ahead and compare these two. So let's start with the Nomen School. Okay, so you can see that the quality of work produced at Nomen is very high. Now let's take a look at the demo reel created by Rebelway. Okay, so as you can see, the demo reel at Rebel Way is really cool as well. All of those shots were created by students in our program. And so whether you decide to go to an in-person school or an online school, you can expect to be able to create some really cool stuff. If you decide to go to an online school instead of going to an in-person school, 
there are a few things that you should do. So here are four tips for success that we really recommend here at Rebelway. Number one is to dedicate at least 30 hours a week for learning and practice. So treat your online experience just like you would an in-person experience. Put in those extra hours, put in the extra time to practice and just refine your skills. It's really important for you to network with other artists. So whether they live in your city or if you're networking with them online, build your network, interact with people, and just generally get your face out there to start having conversations about the industry. Number three is to reach out to industry professionals to ask questions. So people that are successful in the industry are incredibly easy to get a hold of. You can hit them up on LinkedIn, you can private message them in Instagram, or you can just simply send them an email. A lot of times they would love to give you more information about how to land a job at their studio or just generally succeed in the industry. And then number four is to create a portfolio, an online portfolio, a website, a demo reel, things like that and then to share your homework online. So as you create your homework, as you progress through your courses, share them online, make sure to use hashtags and really just get your name out there so that people can begin to associate you with uh, your skills as a VFX artist. So let's talk about starting your career. What do you need to do to get your foot in the door and really kickstart your career as an artist. If you're watching the series, there's a good chance that this is exactly what you're interested in doing. So this is a typical career progression for a VFX artist. So again, like we talked about, you start out as an intern or a showrunner, which basically means you just run around doing various tasks in a studio. And then you move on to a junior artist role. That's typically the role you move into once you are educated and once you are ready to just start your VFX career. You'll then move to a mid-level artist role and then a senior artist role or a technical director role. It just kind of depends on the type of artistic profession you're looking to go into. If you're a little more geared towards enjoying the, the coding and kind of nerdy side of art, then you may go down the TD route. And then again, you may move into a supervisor role. That's completely optional, but some people really their goal is to move into a, ultimately a supervisor role on a big production. So let's talk about these internships. So how do you land one of these first jobs in the industry? So the thing that you're gonna need to have in order to land an internship is number one, a great demo reel. And it doesn't have to be like, the Avengers. It doesn't have to be the best demo reel in the world, but it does need to be one that just demonstrates your competency, one that shows that you have taste, and it needs to feature good work. So if you don't have good work, don't include it in your demo reel. Go out, create shots, go through homework, do pretend projects, and really just create stuff that looks good um, on a demo reel. Number two is to have just an impressive portfolio. So that's an online website, or it could be something like an art station account that really just includes some of your best projects with a breakdown of kind of your thought processes and things like that, just how you intellectually thought through the process of creating the art. Number three is a fantastic attitude. So you always need to have a great attitude if you are trying to land a job. Again, it's an internship role, so you're gonna be doing a lot of work that may be not super desirable to someone who's been in the industry a while, but if you go into it with excitement, with energy, with willingness to work hard, you're gonna find a lot of success and that's gonna to appeal to a potential hiring manager. And then number four, you may need to have some financial savings to support the lower pay. Again, you may end up working at a studio in a very large city, which means it's gonna be a little more expensive than if you lived in a small city. So you may need to have some savings built up so that you can sustain yourself for the contract of the internship, which you know might be three to six months or something like that. So here are a few tips for landing an internship. Number one, make sure you ask for help. Be sure to reach out to people that work at the studio and just say like, hey, 
how did you land an internship here? Or how did you land a job? Do you have any tips for me? That can go a long way. So number two is to send follow-up emails. Just always make sure you're following up with the hiring manager and anyone else who is um, going to be involved in the hiring process at the studio. As soon as you send your application, send a follow-up email. Number three, you can hit up the company on social media. So hit them up, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, to say, hey, I applied for the internship role. I love the work you do. Let me know if you know you have any questions. That can be a great way to just get yourself in front of some of the people at work at the studio. And then number four is to make yourself known. Now, this is where your creativity can come up. Some people will go so far as to create like a custom beer label and they'll like send beer to the studio that says like hire greg he's awesome <laughs> and things like that or they'll send like a cookie cake that's like hire me I'll, i'm gonna work hard things like that there's all sorts of creative and fun things that you can do to make yourself known to a studio and they go above and beyond you know it may seem like these studios are just flooded with high quality talent but the truth is these studios are flooded with pdfs and really bad demo reels they're not necessarily flooded with uh, in-person like swag or people that are really going above and beyond to make themselves known. So once you have an internship role, the key is really just to work hard and have a great attitude. Most internship positions are designed to help you transition into a full-time role. And so if you just work hard, you know, show up on time, do your work, ask questions, but don't be annoying, you know, just find that balance you'll really open up some doors for you. And so I definitely recommend just working hard for three to six months to make the most of your internship. And after you join that studio and have that junior level job, you're going to want to work for about two to three years until you move up into a mid-level VFX job. Again, you may be working in a contractual capacity, in which case, you know, you may arrive at that mid-level position earlier. It may be a little later. It really just depends on how many hours you're able to put in and the opportunities that pop up for you. So if you want all of this information and more, we've created actually an ebook that's entirely dedicated to helping you land your dream job in the industry. It covers things that we didn't talk about in this presentation, like software or important skills to have. So I definitely recommend checking that out. It's a fantastic resource. You should find a link below this video and let us know if you have any questions about any of the information presented in this presentation. We have a team that is dedicated to helping you land your dream job in VFX and grow your skills so that you can work on the projects that you want to work on. And so if you ever have any questions, you can respond to us in the comments of this video or you can email us at info at rebelway.net and our team would be more than happy to help you find the best course for your skill set, give you a learning track, or just answer just generally questions that you have about the industry. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next one, we're going to talk about the lifestyle and the habits that you can set up in your life as a VFX artist to find success.